I'd like to introduce David Payton to you. David has um, <laughs> David is a senior lecturer at the University of Johannesburg, and his um, particular interest for many years has been artist books, particularly um, South African artist books, but artist books in their entirety. And he's done, he did his master's thesis on the subject and has nearly completed his doctoral thesis on the subject. So he's really the, the expert, certainly in this country, but I would say worldwide. Jack and I first curated an exhibition of the Johannesburg Art Gallery in 1996. And I wonder if any of you remember that exhibition. And uh, we were so, so uh, daunted by, by that experience, we thought we'd have to have another go to get it right. And um, although we've had a number of exhibitions of artists' books since, we've never had an exhibition quite like this. In 2017, as part of the Booknesses exhibition at the Un University of Johannesburg, we had a separate international um, exhibition of, from Jack's collection and a separate South African section. But um, the difference between that exhibition and this exhibition is that every single um, item which is uh, down here is part of Jack's collection with one or two additions from the, uh, from the WAM permanent holdings. And I'd like to, just on a personal note, uh, just direct your attention uh, to De uh, the late David Koluane's work on the wall towards the back. And certainly I'd like to um, dedicate my small section this morning to his life, his work, and his memory. One of the things which I want you to think about is the concept of bookness. And so we open the exhibition with two provocative pieces which are not books, but provoke the idea of not what a book is. And I don't want you to ask that question because it takes us, it takes us nowhere, but to rather <coughs> contemplate what a book might be. And I think that's much more productive and much more exciting and uh, gives us a lot more to work with. And so uh, Pippa Scottness um, has presented us with one of three of her cart horses that she um, ethically reclaimed after its death in Kailicha in Cape Town a number of years ago. And this became part of the Book of Iterations series, which started, I think, in 2004, and which is an ongoing series of working with the idea of um, giving something up. And uh, Pippa uh, talks about many, many years ago being in a cave in the south of France, and she was walking along the pathway, and she got the sense of being not just inside a cave, but inside the prehistory of the book. And in walking along the pathway, she was walking the spine of the prehistory of the book. And the walls on either side that contained objects or contained uh, um, engravings or paintings became the pages. And the idea of the ancientness of the book was born for her. And that, I, that in these objects, and certainly in this object uh, by Alan Lang, we have the idea of sacrifice. In Alan's book, we have the idea of sacrificing wood. Most of these pieces of wood were either lying around or they would be sold uh, for firewood or simply disintegrate into the world. And so taking the idea of sacrifice, and the sacrificial um, horse, as a starting point, I think what we need to do is sacrifice some of our sacred ideas of what a book is. It is not merely a textbook, and I think the idea of bookness is something which uh, we have tried to explore in this exhibition. And because both of these wonderful objects have spines, conceptually and in terms of a metaphor, we have hung the exhibition from the spines of these objects. And so in that sense, it is like walking into a book. And although you can't touch these books, unfortunately, the idea is to intellectually and physically and bodily walk into a book and experience this exhibition as a book and the individual uh, cabinets as the pages of the book. And so when people complain that they don't have access to the book, what we need to understand is that we have access to a far richer narrative, a far richer book. And so what we've done in the first couple of cabinets here, left and right, is the idea that, particularly in South Africa, the idea of the book as a collaborative um, object 
is huge. When you look at uh, wonderful artists' books from, um, from America or from the United States or from other parts of the world, Australia, one gets a sense that the collaboration is a technical collaboration. So you have uh, someone who will print with the artist and someone else who will bring the binding to bear and someone else who will bring the marketing uh, to bear. In South Africa, that is wobbled slightly. We have artists and we have uh, communities that make the paper, generate the content, create the graphics, write up the poems and the responses, uh, bind the books together, and then as a collective, market that endeavor. Sometimes that marketing has a financial implication on the artist's life. And I think for me, one of the most important things when we consider one of the chapters in this exhibition is to consider collaboration and the collaborative effort, community as a way of generating ideas through the book. Again, Artist Proof Studio and um, the American artist Robin Silverberg, we have a number of, of artists collaborating to memorialize family members and friends who have been affected or uh, have died from AIDS. We have uh, the stories uh, from uh, the Botswana San community and we have in uh, the Lump Lumpopo province, we have a wonderful collective um, whose uh, women engage with, um, with narratives through, uh, through sewing and through stitching these remarkable books. And I think that for me, the idea of bookness um, needs to start with how we tell our stories, how we negotiate our way through the book. The book is a physical thing. And I think that uh, the American academic Johanna Drucker talks about our conventional notion of a book and that how in the process of reading a book, we forget about the book. We can so quickly forget about the thing, the object. And it just becomes a container of words. And it's actually our minds where the, where the action happens and our brains and our hearts and our guts where the, where the action happens. But books in the hands of the artist really unpacks that, stokes that and says, we will not allow you to forget. And so once again, in that cabinet there, you might have seen Belinda Blichnot's provocative little book that is bound uh, under a, um, under a metallic structure. And if you really want to read that book, you'll have to get out a screwdriver and take out the, the screws and the nuts and bolts and you have to then take off the, the, the covering. What it does is it says to us, what is our relationship with a book? How far are you prepared to unpack your physical relationship with meaning making? Over here, we have Stefan Erasmus's uh, series of small books, and uh, I think the Theseus book, where there's the string, um, that one again has to, to pull out to this incredible length. Can you imagine how long that little book becomes? And the act of reading becomes not just problematized, but it becomes almost impossible. And so, what we have. Um, is a series of ideas around what South Africans have done with the book. I think you will agree with me that uh, for many of us, this is new territory. I think you will agree with me also that South Africans have been busy making art in book form for many, many years. We've just passed the Walter Battises that I have not uh, engaged with because I think uh, most of you probably attended the Battis exhibition a number of years ago. But the Nisos book is from 1968. The uh, male Fook book one is from 1975. And so there is a very, very uh, interesting history of the book in, uh, in South Africa, almost paralleling the time period of international artists' books, which uh, is considered to be uh, the 1960s and onwards with Ed Ruscha's famous books. Again, you will see an example of Ed Ruscha's books upstairs from the 1960s onwards. Jack's famous Penelope Punctuated, which I'm sure Jack can, can talk about it, is the, uh, the final soliloquy of uh, um, Molly Bloom from Ulysses. And uh, Jack has two elements to, to his remarkable book. The first is typographic, to see how uh, font size changes. So as you, you 
page through the book, so the font size changes. And on the page that we have um, here, we have the entire soliloquy printed out on one page. Wow. The last page is the single final yes, <laughs> with a full stop. The first part of the book is uh, dedicated to a treatise on punctuating Penelope and how the possibility of punctuating Penelope changes its storyline and produces uh, multiple different offerings. Towards the back, we have, um, I suppose, three elements. The first is uh, socio-political, uh, taking into account how the artist book in South Africa has dealt with socio-economic and political concerns. The second issue is one of um, excellence in production. And uh, I think some of our uh, international visitors are incredibly uh, pleased, sometimes amazed, at the quality of binding and book production that uh, we have in South Africa. So also in uh, these cabinets from um, Judith Mason's um, book through to uh, Malcolm Payne and, and Pippa Scottness's book here and uh, books by um, Paul Emanuel and the uh, University of Cape Town's print uh, department. We have a number of books which look at excellence in printmaking, excellence in uh, book production, and uh, we have examples here of some of the finest um, books produced as uh, fine press books um, or, or as crafted items. And the third element which we have here are, as Jack said, the book-shaped objects or the, the sculptural books, the book-shaped uh, book or the, 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 the book-like object. So I'm just going to uh, end by talking about um, the three elements which we have curated into the space here. The first is a small space uh, dedicated to William Kentridge's books and to his uh, quasi flip books and digital books, which we are projecting on the wall. The second is um, the history of the relationship between printmaking and journals. And in Wurm and in Izwi, and in um, Willem Bosov's famous Cake Afrikaans, we have a number of ways in which early ideas which became artists' books and which explored the, possibility, the possibilities of the book arts are here on display. And uh, so artists and writers got together in the 60s and 70s, and Wurm and Izwi were particularly important um, non-racial signifiers of the relationship between poets, authors, and artists in South Africa. And although they had a, a relatively limited lifespan, I believe Wurm and Izwi were two very, very important uh, publications um, at the time. And then lastly, I'm very, very interested in what the third year of its university students are doing in the Division of Visual Art. Um, Rach Lassani's students produce these uh, remarkable publications which look at the, the concerns of young South Africans today. What are the issues around decolonized education which we need to continually be, be asking ourselves? What are the questions around the skills needed by young people to enter into the economy of South Africa at the time? What is this institution, what is this building, what is this collection doing? in order to help facilitate those questions, those engagements. So folks, those are some of the issues that um, Jack and Ros and I were grappling with, with uh, when we put this exhibition together. But there is one other thing. It is a celebration of South African artists who work in the, the book arts. And I would like to end by saying that we believe that virtually everything in this exhibition could hold its head up high in any international book arts exhibition. Thanks so much.